What's up guys, this is Coach Ray from West Farm Wrestling and today I'm having a really awesome conversation with one of my absolutely favorite super match pullers of all time, Jeff Hale. Uh, me and Jeff talk about many different subjects. There are timestamps in the description of the video so you can follow along a little bit easier. His phone did at least three acrobatic tricks. Uh, stay tuned for that too. But overall, Jeff is one of the most interesting lightweight pullers on the planet. Uh, someone who has arrived with the super match format but really wants to prove himself as a more tournament puller get like we talk about that glory so i hope you enjoy the conversation um stay strong love arm wrestling yeah the time difference is <laughs> it's a bitch <laughs> yeah, it's like that maybe? yeah it's a 5 p.m for me damn okay <laughs> <laughs> but um so uh straight away tell me what do you do for a living when you're not bending arms oh yeah yeah i'm a petroleum geologist uh, my wife and i own a oil and gas consulting company where we represent a number of the exploration companies here in oklahoma and texas at the uh, oklahoma corporation commission which is a government organization that you have to go through in order to get approved to drill wells here in oklahoma that sounds way too serious <laughs> You know, that's that's not the answer someone asked when, when asked for an arm or what do you do for a living? You're like, I, you know, construction worker or something. He's like, I'm a geologist. Yeah. yeah, for sure. No, it's definitely a little, it, I mean, it, it involves quite a bit. We deal with, a, you know, a judge and an attorney on a regular basis. We're obviously testifying in, in court. And so uh, sometimes we have to do protested hearings, which get pretty intense uh, and, and extremely stressful. <laughs> but uh, yeah, you know. Yeah. It's fun. It pays the bills, and I'm doing it. So, how did, how did you get to that? You know, uh, Megan and I both started off working for different uh, oil companies. As basically, I was a prospecting geologist, and Megan was kind of a uh, um, an operational geologist. So, Megan was kind of drilling wells, steering wells, managing and overseeing what was going on on the, uh, the drill sites, and I was looking for uh, places to go drill and that kind of thing. But basically I got laid off uh, due to just, you know, poor oil prices and our company that at the time was just, was just shrinking basically. And uh, one of the, one of the gentlemen at the gym that I worked out at that I'd known all my life, his name is Ron Barnes, is an oil and gas attorney here in Tulsa. And he suggested that I look into potentially getting involved in the commission business. And so there was a gentleman that was getting out of the business who was an engineer and I went to have lunch with him. He kind of was giving me the, you know, the kind of showing me the ropes of what was, what, was gonna, what, what the job entails. And next thing I know, uh, I'm just freaking, uh, you know, knee deep in the, in the commission business. And it's just snowballed since then. So, yeah. And, and uh, once to be, once the, oh. what? Hold on a second. <laughs> For a second, I thought that you're falling. I was like, <laughs> uh, it's an earthquake. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> you you, no, you just um, you sense our earthquakes, yeah. You just like you oh, went out. So you're just like, sense them, dude. Not today. Just not sense today. them. <laughs> but you know, once we got involved in it and our company kind of took off, I could afford to bring Megan in as, as a partner. Okay. And so it's kind of her and I doing this together. We have one employee who's a, ge a geological technician, and uh, yeah, we're just you know handling business these days. That's awesome. That's really nice to work with your second half, you know. And oh, it's great, dude. And yeah. we have different too, so we don't really clash. If anything, we help one another, uh, you know, be more efficient. So hmm, that's really nice. Like you're, you're pretty much a Randy Marsh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, um, and and uh, give me some background on your your training background. Did you start as an arm wrestler or what, what you were doing before? Oh, I was a baseball player. So I played, uh, obviously, high school baseball. I played one year of college baseball. You know, I, I had big legs, a big ass. You know, I was I ran a 4-4-40 in college, so I was I was really fast. Um, I kind of played shortstop and third base in college. And, you know, <laughs> this setup is not working very well. Anyways, yeah, I was a baseball player. And, um, when I kind of I kind of start, had my first like dealing with collegiate politics and mm -hmm. just left me real sour about the sport. So I was looking for something else to get involved in, 
And I was just thinking in my head, like, what was I good at that I could actually still do now at like 20, 21 years old and like not be like a bum. And I just thought, you know, arm wrestling in, in high school, like, like a lot of the guys in the sport, I didn't lose anybody. I was really good just naturally at arm wrestling. So I just Googled it and found a tournament that was uh, just outside of uh, Kansas City, Missouri, which is where I was at the time, and met some guys from Oklahoma that trained it every, every weekend. And so I transferred back to Oklahoma State University and would come back on the weekends and learn how to arm wrestle. And so, yeah, it kind of just, you know, that's kind of where I – that's kind of that's kind of the, the start was I was really a baseball player, transitioned to arm wrestling. Yeah. Okay. So you, you were a pitcher or a hitter? No, no, I was a, I hit, but no, I was a, I was shortstop and third base in, in high school, so I played infield. Okay. I to college, second uh, second I'm, base. I'm gonna pretend like I know what that means, you know. So I'm like, you, know, yes. you don't know what, baseball? Not really. Not every. I, I sometimes like, watch it. I'm like, what's going on? Why it takes like 20 hours to finish? <laughs> I'm closer to the batter, where I'm fielding ground balls and and turning double plays and that kind of stuff. So. It's really like high speed action in the infield where the outfield you're catching, you know, pop ups and stuff like that and running and diving for, for you know, catches and stuff. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, for me, it's like we, we are so far away from from baseball or American football and, you know, and, and all those things. Th those sports just didn't catch up here. So it's, it's very for me, it's interesting. I sometimes watch like American football and I don't understand everything. I understand something. And uh, baseball is the same thing. It's kind of fascinating to me, you know. That, uh, well, you've, you've been down here. You've been to the U.S. numerous times. Have you not gone to a festival? I've been once. Once? You've only been once to the U.S.? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Damn, I thought it was once. Yeah. I, people think I started COVID, so. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But, uh, next zero. So how, how did you do in your first tournament? I took third place in my first tournament. It was the open pro class. Um, there were no big names in that class, you know, at the tournament, there were some big names. Don Underwood was there, you know, I had met Don Underwood for the first time. Uh, it was a Leonard Hart. Uh, it was Leonard's one of Leonard and Denise's tournaments. And uh, I think it was Kansas state and Bonner Springs, Kansas. And uh, I can't remember if Bill Logston was there or not, but again, I just met some guys from Oklahoma that I said, Hey, we do this every weekend. Come, come join the team kind of thing, you know? And I was like, fuck yeah, this sounds awesome. <laughs> and then my first experience with it, with the, with it in, in that kind of competitive format, it was like the adrenaline rush was intense. I mean, it was, I mean, it, it was like getting in a fight with somebody. And when you won, it just felt like you knocked the guy out. Like it just, oh, it was like a full body adrenaline rush. And, you know, it's something that I think a lot of guys in the sport, um, you just get addicted to and you just want to continue to, to do that over and over and feel that, you know, excitement and energy, you know, every time you get on the table. Yeah. S same here. It feels like, you know, it's just, I cannot exp explain to people who don't arm wrestle, you know, how great of a feeling is to beat someone, you know? Yeah. Or, and, and, and it, it's a good feeling when you have been losing to them for quite some time and then eventually surpassing them. That's even better. You know, there's levels, but yeah, it's kind of, it's a different kind of adrenaline and it's a different kind of fight. You know, we, we don't sure. end up like Devin. <laughs> no, that's one thing I, I always liked fighting. In fact, I did martial arts when I was a kid, but I didn't like getting hit in the face. I didn't like having a black eye or a broken nose or anything. I just didn't like, I don't even like my face being touched by people. So, you know, for me, our mission was perfect. I like it to be fucking mean and I get to be aggressive, but no one's touching me in the face. <laughs> So how much time did it took for you to uh, like reach the level that you're not, not you're in now. because it takes a little bit longer time to do it, but to be relevant, you know, in I'd say levels. about five, I mean, probably about five years. And I would say even the first, you know, the first three, maybe even four of those, I'll say, I'll say the first three of those years, you know, it was just arm wrestling only. I, I wasn't, I thought that it would, I thought, arm wrestling was, was natural for me and I wouldn't need to have the gym to help me get better. Mm. So for me, once a week arm wrestling training, and I thought that's all I needed for about three years. And I slowly started to get involved in the gym and, and uh, realize pretty quickly how, you know, how helpful it can be and how much it can advance you as far as your strengths, strength levels and stuff. So 
um, about 2010 is when I felt like I kind of started to become a little bit more relevant because that's my first, that was my first uh, year at Arm Wars. And I feel like Arm Wars was like really inspired me to like, okay, I'm going to be more dedicated. I'm going to change my lifestyle to, you know, be a professional, a truly a professional athlete. Mm. Yeah, that's, yeah, you, you kind of end up there. You know, a lot of people will think they have gifts and they will stick to those gifts. A lot of people never learn. A lot of people in our sport never learn and they kind of stay the same. They're, they're really talented, but they stay the same for a long time. Sure. Uh, so you are like one of my favorite armistices to watch in a super match format. Like it doesn't matter, but you're one of my favorites. And you, of course, it's the Hellraiser, you know, that's. <laughs> That's so captivating. So it, and I know it's it's kind of persona because, like we were, we were set up to have a match in Arm Wars, and I, yes. all I all I know about that or you was watching you on the videos. And I'm looking, I'm like this guy. I'm like he looks like a douchebag. He looks like this. And then we had some conversations, and I'm like, no, he's not. You know, <laughs> yeah. How did that happen? You know, the Hellraiser character was inspired by, you know, my dad, really, because, you know, I would hear stories about my dad, you know, back from the, in, the, in the 60s and 70s, late 60s and early 70s, just kind of, you know, being a badass in a sense, you know. And, and in fact, I went to a, a family function and I think I might have been like 10 years old. And, uh, you know, a little old lady came up to me and she said, are you uh, Ross Hale's son? I said, yes, ma'am, I am. And she goes, your daddy was a little Hellraiser when he was your age. And I just thought, you know, what stuck to me on that was Hellraiser. And I already knew my dad was kind of a wild, you know, man back in the day. And so I was like, man, Hellraiser, that's, that's fucking cool. I like that. You know, I like that ID because my last name's Hale. And I thought I could just, you know, make it, make a little nickname out of it. And so it kind of just, I basically had that nickname in the back of my mind for like, you know, 10, 15 years before, you know, I got involved in arm wars and, when I got involved in arm wars, Neil was like, dude, just, you can, this is going to have some fun. Basically you come out, you be yourself, but you can be an exaggerated version of yourself. If you want to be, and you can take it to whatever level you want. And I just thought, man, I got, I got a lot of freedom here to, to have, to have fun and just kind of be someone that, you know, maybe isn't appropriate in everyday society. So I thought, well, this is my opportunity to bring out the Hellraiser. And I just, it was kind of a slow evolution of the character, but I ultimately wanted him to be a bad guy. I wanted him to be somewhat funny. Um, I wanted it to be like, kind of like, you know, I always thought of like the Joker from the Batman series where like, he's a bad fucking dude. I mean, he's a bad guy, yeah. but people, you know, sometimes people even root for him, it seems like. So I kind of wanted that type of feel to the Hellraiser character. Yeah, that's, because the persona is really good. Like it's, it's really good. Like. I don't know how much hours I can spend watching your matches. Sometimes I will just like, right, you know, I'm bored and I'm like, let's watch some arm wrestling. Uh, you and Alan Fisher with that uh, Jukebox Hero theme song. It, that <laughs> match is one of my favorites, you know? Yeah. Yeah, that's, <laughs> and there's so much more. So I'm, I'm, cause not a lot of people do it. It's, it's again, I feel it's kind of American thing to do uh, to create persona, but you did, you do it so good. I'm happy that you do it, you know. I appreciate that, right? I appreciate it very much, man. <laughs> uh, you, I think we talked about this. Uh, and, uh, yeah, I asked you about what you like more, tournaments or super matches. And you said kind of both, you know. Yeah, you know, my I, I got spoiled early on. I got to be involved in arm wars in a very really, really early part of my arm wrestling career. So I kind of, like, bypassed the... the, the high level tournaments and went straight to super matches. And I really, really enjoyed that experience. But I, at this point in my life, I really am more about the tournaments because I have, there's, there are goals that I've set for myself that I set for myself at the very beginning that I had not yet met that, uh, you know, I feel like I need to focus more on now over super matches. Now I, I still love to do them and they are a lot of fun. Um, and probably more fun than tournaments, it's just far, far from just from an enjoyment of arm wrestling. But the glory and the you know the pride you feel and the you know the honor you feel from you know going to some of these world world class tournaments and winning, I think is above and beyond uh, the super match in my opinion. 
Yeah, so last time I saw you pulling, uh, it was 2019 Romania Worlds, WAF Worlds. Uh, so we talked there and, 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 you know, then I posted some videos and, then, and I read some comments and, and I, I don't think people understand what it's like to be in that high level competition. And what I want to say is, you know, I, you belong there. You know, there's some, like a lot of guys came and they didn't belong on that level. You came in there, you gave everything you could, you fought the hardest matches on the planet and you look like you belong. It doesn't matter if you win. Like at, at, for, for me, it didn't matter that you won or lost. You are there. So I'm, I'm happy that you want to seek that, that kind of glory. You know, that's... For sure. I, mean, I just think it's, I mean, I think especially the WAF World Championships is just kind of the, it's the top of the, it's the top of the, you know, Ooh, pyramid is, yeah. you know, being, being the best, at least respectively for that year or whatever, for your weight class or whatever. So, I mean, yeah, I, I, and all those guys, especially in the lightweight classes, are fantastic arm wrestlers. I mean, they're, I still think that the lightweights in general across, across, the, across the board are technically a lot more sound arm wrestlers. Um, the heavyweight guys, for me, are not as enjoyable to watch or even follow because they just aren't as... They don't, they don't look as good up there. They're just big They're freaking just big. bowling balls that just roll yeah. over people. Yeah. Not like the awesome different techniques that just, I don't know, the versatility of the lightweights just, it, the versatility and the speed is just like no other. Yeah, you, you have to have a like lot more weapons in your arsenal to be fighting in under 75 and 90 kg, you know? Yes. So why did my camera stop? <laughs> <laughs> okay, I will fix that. Don't worry. But uh, you you come back from from uh, from Romania. What's in your head? What? How do you look at that competition? And yeah, um, one second. You know, no, not right now. Sorry, my daughter's my daughter's <laughs> coming in. <laughs> uh, you know, honestly, uh, when I came back from Romania, it was all about how can I be more efficient. I felt strong. I felt like I was just as strong as anybody else in the class. I felt like I lacked in explosiveness. I feel like, you know, I'm not a slow guy. I'm pretty fast and I'm pretty explosive. But the level of explosive that I faced over there was different. Guys like Makarov, you know, he would just, I don't feel like he would, I feel like if we had just gone nice and easy, ready, go, and just like ease into a hook kind of thing, I'm right there with him. That it just, that, that just explosiveness was too much for me to, to handle. Uh, even Zaza was tough that day, you know, and I think I still think I'm a lot stronger than Zaza, but the explosiveness was just another level. And so when I came back, it was all about trying to figure out how can I, as I, I felt like I killed myself in the gym, like that I, to the point where like I'm hitting good numbers, but I'm not recovering, you know, to the point where I'm feeling like I'm just always ready to go, always mm -hmm. ready to fight. And so it's about it's just been about efficiency. I've I've gotten some outside outside of the armistice community help to help me with my programming in the gym and uh, just to try to you know become a, a lot more efficient and not worry so much about you know one big number. You know I see guys like Arakli from Georgia hitting these crazy bicep curls you know for one rep, some crazy number, and you know I'm not worrying about that shit anymore. I'm worrying about me and my efficiency, and my muscle recruitment. I think if I put all my muscles together, I'm going to beat that guy's bicep. If he's only, That's all he's using kind of thing. That's, that's the mentality. So, yeah. yeah, I think efficiency is the best word to put it. Execution. I think, I think Eastern Europeans or Europeans or Kazakhs, they're very good at executing their move. You know, they, yeah. they don't think about anything else. They just make that move so, so efficient. And I was thinking about this like a few days ago. Um, like I remember, like, I don't feel good or my guys don't feel good if they have, if, if someone stopped them in a match at any position, anywhere, that's, that's a loss. Cause you want to, you want to clean the tournament as fast as you can. It's not that enjoyable to watch, but that's yeah. the execution. You know? Yeah, no, for sure it is. <laughs> Dude, your, your phone's going to be <laughs> dead after <laughs> this one. <laughs> Um, no, I'm with you 100. percent You know, those guys. I mean, they're almost robots up there. They're just so efficient. What? It's just so fast, 
and you know i do feel like the the american or the north american arm wrestlers in general we do a lot of crazy movements and you know crazy techniques and it's not always that efficient they like to load really hard over here over in you know europe there's no load i mean it's very it's just uh it's different it's a lot it's, yeah it's different but i think it's you know yeah like you said like um i will say the idea is always to crack someone. So if if someone does one thing and you can kind of figure it out, you know, where to put the keys on it and to open it up, then everyone's just going to take 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 those doors and use it. So it all yeah. takes someone to kind of figure someone out. And then if you have enough technical power, all, all that good arm wrestling stuff, you can do it. So it's either, in my opinion, to be very good at executing one move or kind of figuring out where your opponent is at his worst, you know, yeah. and, and kind of choosing between two, two doors, you know, and just go where you can. But yeah, when I look back at guys who have won that tournament, you know, too, I, I feel like most of them are one move focused guys. Yeah. You don't see a lot of versatility on, on the podium. They just got one badass move and they're just smashing fools with it. Yeah. Yeah. And it's like some guys will like, I always look at the scores and when, where, where someone places year by year and you can kind of figure it out when someone, when their best move got beat and how everyone else figured it out. But there are some guys like, you know, like Zaluya. It's so hard to, under, like everyone knows what he's doing. And even then he switched it up to top roll, you know. At, yeah. But it took like 20 years, almost 20 years. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, so being so efficient is good in arm wrestling, but you 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 can switch up between styles pretty easily. You you look like you could top roll hook whatever is needed. Yeah, no, I, I am pretty versatile, but I mean, I, I wouldn't say at least, especially at the time in 2019, I wouldn't say that any one move was, you know, that that superior of a move mm -hmm. to go in and just same move every every match, and, and, and especially in a tournament like that, the WF. So yeah, I, I have relied on versatility, but I would like to have something more, more generic, more something something I can really just focus more on to get through most of those matches. And then, it, then it, if you know, if you get to the finals or the semifinals and you have to make an adjustment, so be it. Mm. Because you know, that's the thing is that you know, like I said before, when I started off with arm wars and doing the super matches, that really brought my versatility up because we had six rounds to pull each other. So you had opportunities to test out all kinds of different areas, especially if you were up 2-0 or 3-0. You could just start throwing all kinds of crap at the guy and see what happens. And I remember my first experience at WAF, which was 2013. Uh, I, uh, I went up there thinking I could do the arm wars gig, and it didn't, did not work. Mm -hmm. I ended up getting flashed in by a guy named Boris from Ukraine. I thought, I thought I'd go, okay, I knew the guy was going to press. I knew yeah. it, so I thought, okay, I'm going to let him – come in here like this and I'm going to catch him here and roll out around him and I'm going to bum him. I yeah. got flashed in so fast that I had, I mean, I never even got to the move. You know, I was like, well, shit, that did not work. Yeah. <laughs> and it so took... different arena, different, different mentality, a different everything than the super match stuff. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. And uh, here, like, I think right now we kind of in this, uh, super match world we're living in everyone wants to have a super match it's it's yeah. the big thing you know it's the big thing and uh you you can you can gain a lot of stuff from that but i all like you need tournaments as well you know tournaments will uh, tournaments will allow you recognize where you're really good at what thing is your best thing you know because you you're gonna use it more than anything else and you're like okay this is where i go super matches like you said you can play around at some point and uh this is why this is why pl have so boring for super matches because oh, there's just guys who will just do one thing they will they, they are too scared to switch it up yeah yeah exactly that last match with levon and and dave Chabie is a perfect example of that they didn't go to the strap once did they no no. I mean, come on. Uh, geez, like, have some fun up there. Do you have to win all five, six matches? Is it that important? I mean, uh, are these guys sponsored by someone that says, hey, if you don't win every match, you're off. You're, we're done. We're not giving you any more money. I don't know. Why can't these guys loosen up and have some fun? It, it seems like it's just too serious at PAL. I, I heard that they pay for winning each round, so you get paid by winning 
like you won four rounds, you get paid like 2000 euros for that or something like that. So kind of makes sense, but still, you know, you can still test yourself or get a better challenges, but it's, I'm, I'm not th- even talking about the top guys. I'm talking about, you know, the, the, the guys that are missile before, and it's, it's so common to see one thing, nothing changes. You know, you smash guy four zero and, and the same thing we, we saw with um, Zaluyev and uh, Haji and I was in the audience yeah. and I'm screaming, hook, hook, come on, yeah. let's get some hook. And they're like, okay, let's get some hook. At, at least, you know, something. <laughs> now, that's why I always thought was cool about Neil Pickup is that with Arm Wars, he actually, he, he, means, he said, I prefer you have a 3-3 tie over a 6-0 win. Because a 3-3 tie means that you guys had a war and yeah. went back and forth. And the audience, who doesn't know who the hell you are, the majority, at least the audience, doesn't know who you are, now they're having a good time. Now they're enjoying this, this battle, this back and forth, this tug of war, versus just this flash pin six times in a row. They're like, ah, oh, it was boring as hell. Move on. Switch the channel. Boop. You know? Yeah. Yeah. So there is an entertainment aspect to super matches that I don't think a lot of athletes really take into account. No. And it's hard. It's, 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 it is really hard when you get to be in, like, it's like, for instance, Giannis and I, both high level guys, there's not, there's no, there's not going to be any opportunities to punk one another, in my opinion. It's going to be a war. It's going to be, I got to get the match. I got to get it over with quick. I got to win. Mm. It's going to be more like a tournament style mentality, I think, in that super match than it is going to be like the entertainment style. Because yeah. the, the because level. It's, it's, and also it's battleground. You yeah. Know? You still have exactly. to pull. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, we'll we'll talk about that match a little bit later. Um, this is this is my top question I ask everyone. Why do you love arm wrestling? Why do I love arm wrestling? I, yeah. I love to win. I love to win. You know, I I love to be a professional athlete. It was always my dream as a kid to be a professional athlete. And although this may not be what I do for a living, um, I'm very passionate about it. And I and I and I love being fit. I love being strong. You know, I love, you know, I love the competition. I, I love testing myself. You know, I like, you know, I like determining who's the strongest. I like that. I just, to, it's just in my, it's just in my competitive nature. So I, I love armistice because it's just amazing. I mean, it's just, it's just great. I think my, my, my true passion for competition really comes out in arm wrestling. That's awesome. Like, that's one like I have many reasons on different day you would ask me I have many different reasons but that, that's the one you know it, it's it's kind of interesting because it's it's so complicated longer you look at it you know when you see it first time it looks very simple but yes longer you kind of look at it it kind of changes in front of your eyes and it's kind of wonderful and you're always in that pursuit there's always bigger fish to catch and it's always there and it's always and you want to win and winning is the best feeling ever. Oh, yeah. <laughs> like, Megan, I say, you know, one of these days, if I'm going to say makes it into the Olympics during my lifetime, I, I have to continue to train because I don't care if I'm 70 years old. I want to be in the Olympics competing. So, and this is one of those, this is one of the few sports where you can be 70 years old and still be a badass. I mean, look at guys like Crazy George up in, in, in Canada. I know he has a King's move under his belt, but it doesn't matter. He's still competing at a very high level. And so, you know, I, I want to continue to do that, too. I mean, I, I think it's fantastic. I think it's amazing. So, yeah, this is one of the sports of longevity. I, I remember when I started, people were saying, your elbow is going to be effed at the end. You're just going to be terrible. Your arm's going to hurt. I'm like, just look around. Look around in our world. It's like, like yeah, elbows hurt. But also, the 70-year-old guy just beat world champ. <laughs> yes. <laughs> You know, maybe you're maybe it's it's tougher to develop muscle and stuff like that as you get older. But those tendons, if you continue to arm wrestle, all the old guys that I know that arm wrestle, those tendons are iron. I mean, they're just ca- iron cables, and I mean that that can that can take you a long ways right there. Yeah, it's it's all about understanding what you can do and cannot do, and yeah, that, that's. I I love arm wrestling just for just for that reason alone. You know, I'm 30 and. 40 years more, you know, so. <laughs> <laughs> so you're having a big return to Arm Wars. When was the last time you competed in Arm Wars? 2015 or 16? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was 2016. 
but it wasn't really officially. I mean, I guess it was, but I mean, it wasn't film. It wasn't filmed for Eurosport. Mm-hmm. The last yeah. I was involved in, I think it might have been 2013 or 2014. 2014 is what it was. But yeah, 2016 we had a kind of yeah we had an arm wars, but it wasn't like I said, it wasn't like an official filmed thing for TV. No. Yeah, they they changed it. like everything changed, but I think Neil is doing like a really hard work to putting all this together and uh, ma- making it uh, as best. Like I always love how Neil puts up matches that are really interesting, and it's so hard to predict. You know, yeah. Th- this this is this is the magic of Arm Wars. Sometimes you know, like this guy is way too better, way too good for this guy. You know, but Neil kind of you know has that magic touch. And he does. It's p- people don't understand that it's for he, he wants to bring that entertainment. It's like you can win world championships at WAF, you can win Zloty, uh, you can go to top eight. But here we're gonna give good matches that showcase the amazing arm wrestling of arm wrestling. Yes. So uh, you have a tough, tough job ahead of you. You have Giannis to pull. Yes. Uh, I, I don't think it's, <laughs> I don't think there's any kind of surprises, you know. Uh, Giannis will top roll and either you will try to top roll him or you will try to get in hook. Uh, how has yeah. been preparation for this? I think it's been good, you know. I think, um, yeah, I think it's been really good. Uh, you know, have I sat here and thought specifically about Giannis? I have to be honest. No, I haven't because... My preparation uh, up until, you know, just a couple months ago, probably for WAF. Mm-hmm. And that was the main focus. We were, we were supposed to do WAF a week before this event. Um, and I was just going to kind of carry over to Arm Wars to see what happened. But, uh, no, I have been thinking about Giannis a lot lately over the last month or so. And, you know, I, I think a lot of it comes down to hand manipulation. Um, can one of us put the other in a position to not access their power? I think it kind of comes down to that. And uh, I, I've been working real hard to um, do the best I can against Giannis. I have to be honest, with Giannis, out, out of the three guys I could have potentially faced, Giannis scares me by, by far the most. Um, you know, I, I don't have any fear for Tom or Mendogas, honestly. Mm. Their styles don't scare me. Mm. Are they capable of beating me? Of course they are, but it doesn't scare me. Giannis is different. Uh, Giannis is a great hand manipulator. Hand, hand manipulator. He puts people in positions that – just sucks their power away from him. And then it makes it effortless for him, damn near. Uh, he's got crazy, crazy amount of experience at high level arm wrestling. So I, I give him a lot of respect. And, you know, although I will, joking, I will say this. I do have the, uh, the, the better record against Giannis, both left-handed and right-handed. <laughs> yes, but do. that doesn't mean shit today. So, right? I mean, you know. <laughs> I, I can't even remember how I beat him, honestly, back in back 2014. So it's just, it's you know, this is going to be a new a new match, a new day, and uh, I, I'm excited to see what happens. I think the good part about this battleground is there's so much history with each. Like, everyone has pulled everyone. Yeah. And, you know, maybe once, maybe twice, but everyone has pulled everyone. And uh, it, it's... For me, it's really interesting. Like Minda and Tom, it's so hard to predict that one, to be honest, you know. Uh, I I don't even know. But uh, if, if you had a choice, you know, like let's say you couldn't pull Giannis, which would be easier way, in your opinion, for you? Tom or, That's, or Minda? I mean, I've got wins on Tom, so it would be easy. Oh, Tom. But no, I really feel like I'm less scared of Mindagas right now than I am of Tom. Hmm. You know, Tom is uh, very similar to me in that his, in my opinion at least, his foundation for arm wrestling is more hook-based. Uh, that plays well for me if, I, if he does that. But I don't think he wants to hook me anymore. You know, I think, he, I think after the last two super matches that we've had together, I really believe that in his mind it's, it's about top rowing me and keeping me out of, that, out of that power, not meeting me, you know, face-to-face in the middle. Um, and Dagus, you know, I just, uh, after filming him in 2019 at the Arnold Classic, he was superior to me that day, definitely, 100%. But the style of arm wrestling that he, that he possesses doesn't intimidate me, doesn't scare me, doesn't, feel, doesn't make me feel like I can't get access to any kind, any kind mm. of power against him. So I really don't – I'm not really scared of him right now. Um, so I think if I had the choice of pulling someone other than Giannis, it would be Mendogas. 
it's like I, I wouldn't want to pull any of you. <laughs> to be honest. All, all of you are, are too nasty, but uh, I think it's a great event, and I'm I'm very like I'm gonna see you next week, so this should be cool. yeah. Uh, are you going to Off Worlds? I have uh, told Simon, the president of the USAF, that I am going. I really haven't committed 100% to it yet because my my wife is pregnant. Oh. We're expecting a baby in January, mid-January, mid-late January. And so it's kind of going to be one of those things where after this Arm Wars event, you know, if everything kind of, you know, win or lose, if I feel good, if everything feels good, I come back feeling healthy. Uh, and I have like, and I feel like I have enough time to get prepared for the worlds. And uh, my wife Megan uh, is oh, gives me the green light to go. Then yes, I'm going to try to go to Romania and, and uh, try to get a world title this year. Because I, I honestly, I really do believe I could have won uh, this year. I, I feel I feel good. I feel great. I've made a lot of different adjustments in my game, uh, both in the gym and on the table. And I I feel like I'm capable of beating uh, the Europeans. That's good. That's like. I, I can't wait to see you, buddy. I can't wait to, you know, hang and just pull and, you know, all the good stuff that we're going to do there. And uh, is have you been competing since Buff Worlds? Did you compete? I competed one at one tournament, the sit-down national championships. Oh, yeah. um, I competed that. So I've only done one tournament uh, mm -hmm. because of COVID. But, um, yeah, I mean, and, and I did very well there. That was the only event that I've got to test out my new training that was back in, I guess, maybe April of this year, April of this year, I guess it was. And, uh, and it was fantastic. I had a really great experience. Sit down is a lot more difficult than stand up because the body's isolated. You don't get any muscle recruitment from the, from the lower body at all. So mm -hmm. it's a lot more difficult. It's a lot harder to finish people. And, uh, and although there may not have been guys at that tournament in the two classes that I pulled that are maybe recognized as world-class pullers, it's still a different type of game. And the guys that I, the guys that I had an opportunity to pull, those guys have done that before. If it, sit down, just sit down someone you got to train. It's totally different than, than stand up. And I thought it was kind of funny, you know, after kind of experiencing it and, you know, uh, thinking back about uh, the history of American or North American arm wrestlers in WAF, uh, Talking to Steve Stanaway, he said the last time they had a WAF World Championship that was sit down was 1993, and I wonder. I just kind of wonder if if removing sit down from the American arm wrestling world, if that was one of the factors why we haven't been very successful at the lightweight, middleweight divisions at WAF anymore. Because I'm telling you, that core strength, the side pressure, the control that you need just from your upper body on the sit down table is fucking crazy it's awesome i've and for me it's been super refreshing to to train this you know um on a regular basis so i think it's helped help me with my stand-up game i think it's helped me with the strap game i think it's uh you know it's allowed me to focus more on what's happening here and again remove the lower side of things so that i'm not having to worry about my body position and my legs and all this other crap i don't know i, I think that maybe sitting down was a was a key to american success at uh, high level tournaments well if you do really good in off worlds everyone's gonna be like where we can do some sit down <laughs> yeah. I, I have never tried sit down but i like just from watching my it feels like it's very joint oriented you know it's it's not like there's not a lot of space to pull back because again you cannot lean back that much it's more not 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 necessary hook but more inside more closer am i correct i think you are correct in a sense that it is, it's very uh comfortable to hook on the sit down table but uh the reality is in my opinion top rowing is still better because sit down is so hard to finish sideways that is if you are not as strong as your opponent or you feel like uh you know you're pretty close in strength it's almost better to be a little more defensive on the go than explosive because if you're really explosive on the go and you, and you lose position as you're coming down you're never coming back from that even if you try to come back up it's hard to get that adjustment back this guy's got too much better position and this resting top roll this resting defensive top roll is like damn near king sit down in my opinion mm -hmm. interesting because yeah again you get all that body weight the body the body weight's neutralized so like 
especially when you're training uh, with your team and stuff like that. If, if you're pulling a 300 pound guy who would smash you typically on the stand up table, you pull him on the sit down table. You're either winning some of those matches or it's very fucking close because they can't get that 300 pounds dropping on you. So now it's like more about efficient strength. Who has, who has, who is pound for pound stronger upper body? It's, it's awesome. I mean, it, it really, it changes the game a little bit as far as, you know, size doesn't necessarily matter as much. And I don't know if you've seen like, you know, Travis Bates has done some of those tournaments where he has like, it's basically like a single elimination tournament where you have big guys here and little guys here and they kind of just, kind of meet in the middle at yeah. the end of the turn well this would be that would be fantastic for sit down i think because sit down again eliminates that weight advantage in a sense mm -hmm. so you know i would like to see more sit down tournaments happen uh, i know it's not as much fun for like the maybe the audience to watch because there's not all this movement taking place and stuff and whatever you know but uh, a lot of fun to arm wrestle sit down Dude, I, I need to try. I think we had some sit-down tables here in Latvia, but it was like, I, I remember I saw one back in 2000 or 2004. So it's a long time ago. But yeah, it looks like I think there's a lot of things you can take from a lot of different arm wrestling, even, even freedom, even freedom arm wrestling, you know? Yeah. yeah. Have you tried that? I've never tried it, but I've, I'd like to try it. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, well, I've been to Japan once before, and I had a fantastic experience there. And I'd like to go back and and kind of do what Devin Lorette did. That'd be fun to go out there and and you know, sumo arm wrestling. Sumo. Yeah. Yeah. So cool. Yeah, that sounds. Yeah. Well, I'll I'll uh, I'll get to Oklahoma, and then we get to Canada and do some. <laughs> <laughs> Man, it's been That's a blast cool. talking with you. I can't wait to see you. <laughs> like, you, Ray. Yeah. I, I'm. You know. I was telling. Uh, um. Tom, I'm meeting up with Tom and Frodo when I get into London. We're taking the train up to Birmingham. So I'm looking forward to just that little train ride. It's going to be fun. Just, you know, like, you know, seeing yourself, seeing Giannis, seeing all the buddies and, and having an opportunity. We haven't, haven't seen you guys in a long time, you know, and, and it'll be nice to just kind of chit chat and bullshit and, you know, uh, catch up with one another for sure. Yeah. Well, th this time, if we do any interview, you're going to sit in front of us, you know. <laughs> okay. I get to out angle Giannis and you this time. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Man, this was a blast. Um, yeah. Hellraiser, guys. Bye. Hell yeah.